So in our previous video, we built an assembly info class using the IDO development guide on the Mongoose portal. For this video, we are going to build a code underscore people extension class to auto-populate the age of requested using a postload collection. And this is all going to happen underneath that class. Looking into our code underscore people form as it currently stands, remember the global script in one of the previous tutorials? Every time you select a record, the age gets calculated based on a date of birth. But for this custom assembly that we're creating, every time we're going to load a form, there's no need for us to select into each of our records. So what we're gonna do is to go to design mode, go to system, edit event handlers. And what we're going to do is to disable standard object select current completed. We click done, save and close, control U. Then when you open code underscore people, you see that age is no longer populated. So now we're gonna go ahead and open Visual Studio so that we could modify the solution file that we have once had. So let's open our code solution file. So this was the assembly info class we once built earlier. We just imported it, but it didn't do anything. So right now we're gonna go to code, right click on code, select add, and click on class. And now make sure you select visual C sharp items and select class. And we're going to name this after our uh, IDO. So our IDO is code underscore people. I'm gonna go ahead and click add. So now we have created our code underscore people class. This is going to be the IDO extension class starter template that we're mostly gonna be using. And after this, using this template, this class is going to be looking like this. So first we're gonna grab our namespaces and also based on that post load collection IDO event handler, we're going to have this class automate its own code. And does this method look familiar? This method was used in both your form script and your global script. And we're gonna use it once again in our custom assembly. So now let's start adding namespaces. So we'll need Mongoose IDO, Mongoose IDO protocol and system globalization. So now let's take a look once again at our IDO extension class starter template. So what we're gonna do is to declare the IDO extension class, which is going to be the IDO. And we're going to just define the name and say that it's an extension class space. So we could just go around here, extension class. Inside the parentheses, we're gonna do code underscore people. Next to class, we're going to define the extension class base. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this function. This is a similar function that our form script, global script, we're gonna paste it in there. And we're gonna start coding our way. So first we're going to need to set the context and then we're going to need to declare the IDO event handler so that every time our IDO loads, we're going to load this method. So let's start. So we're gonna go to public override void and press the down key. And once set context, IDO extension class context is highlighted, let's press tab and it should auto populate what you need. So underneath the base.set context, we are going to declare the context is our IDO. If there's like a post load collection. What a post collection is, is that it's an IDO event handler that fires after a load collection request has been processed. So when we load our IDO code underscore people, it should automatically fire the following set of events. So we go plus equal sign. So after pressing plus and equal sign, you're going to see this pop up. We're going to insert this by pressing tab. And after pressing tab, we're prompted by another pop up that says press tab to generate handler. So we would want to generate the handler because this is where we're gonna put the piece of code that we need. So after generating this handler, IDO post load collection is now here. We'll not need this through new not implemented exception. And we're just gonna go ahead and do a load collection response. And we're gonna name it RESP. Every time we're gonna need to refer to that IDO, we're gonna need to call it the RESP. And we're gonna do a, so this is the code that we're going to need. So it's gonna be a load collection response data dot. Oh. 
path right now. We're going to declare two variables that are have integer data types. So we're going to get the index of this data birth from our database. So RESP. Grabbing that property list and its index. And then grabbing. Oh, make sure that you put these in parentheses. So if both of our index DUB is greater or equal to zero and ADX age equal to zero. We're going to run this loop. So for this loop, for each of the items in the database, and each of this item is each record. IDO item, let's declare an item in our database because we don't know how many items are currently in there and this loop would just take care of that. We're just going to declare another variable, which is going to be a string of that date of birth. So we're going to assign the property value of that date of birth into the string. We're also declaring a date time variable, which we're going to be using later as a holder of our output for the date parsing. So here underscore. So if our date time that try parse exact. So let's call that string from the database. We're going to format this string into a date. Set the format. We're not going to set a time style. And the output will be the variable we just declared as date time, which would be DOB. And once this is set inside this code, we're going to be utilizing the get age method that we have in here. And after this method occurs, it's going to place the value inside one of our columns in our IDEO. We're going to just grab the item, property values, get that index. We're going to set the value. And inside these parentheses, we're going to place that method, get age. So since it needs two values, so we're going to say that our daytime reference will be daytime now comma our daytime birthday will be our date of birth that we just parsed from the database and say that it's date of birth close that and there and we just wrote our code underscore people extension class so we're just going to build this solution and this build has been successful just take note of the file path because we'll be needing to re-import this into the database once again so Right now it's still not working because when I open my code underscore people, nothing is populating it. So what we're going to do is that we're going to reopen our IDEO custom assemblies. So this was the, our custom assembly that we created earlier. And we are now going to update this because we just built our code solution. So we're just going to grab that code.dll file. Or if you lost that file path of yours, you could just continue to just like paste that in from the build. And we're just going to import our code.pdb. After this, let's click save. And make sure let's unload the metadata cache. Close this. And our next step is to attach this into our IDEO. So this is one of the new steps that we haven't done so far, especially from the previous video. So now we're going to connect our IDEO extension class to an IDEO. So we're just going to go ahead and open our IDEO form. Take it out of filter in place, go to code underscore people, and see this part. So as we imported our DLL file into the custom assemblies, it should show up here. So this is what we imported with a DLL file and a PDB file. So now we have code as our custom assembly name. Now we're going to declare our extension class name. We're going to be grabbing this information based on the class that we declared here. So we have code underscore people, which is also the same as our IDEO extension class. And our namespace would be located here, which is our code. All right. So once we have this information, we could save it. Press Control U to unload the metadata cache once again. Close this. And now what's going to happen once we load our, our same old form, all of the records will auto-populate age. So let's go to code underscore people. And as we can see here, because of that custom load assembly that we just imported, each of the records now auto-populate age. Thank you for watching.
For more videos like this, visit the Mongoose Portal. Join us for part 6 where Helena will take us through diagnostics and debugging.